All right, in this video, I'm going to do an example of graphing a hyperbola. And what I'm going to graph is x squared over 49 minus y squared over 25 equals 1. Again, depending on whether you have the form x squared minus y squared equals 1 or y squared minus x squared equals 1, it's going to open in a, you know, a different way. So we've got x squared minus y squared. So to me, this is going to look like uh, a parabola that opens you know, to the left and the right. So I'm going to just cover up the one here on the right because we don't really need it. So again, the things, kind of the, the bits of information to me that are needed, we need our a value, we need our b value, and we need our c value. And from that, I think we can make a decent little graph. So um, a squared is going to equal 49. So if we take the square root, we would get positive and negative 7. But again, I'm just going to keep the, uh, the positive 7 for my a value. Our b squared would equal 25. Well, again, if we take the square root, I'm going to keep just the positive solution. So I'm going to use b equals positive 5. We know our relationship. We have c squared equals a squared plus b squared. Again, a squared is the denominator of the x squared term. b squared is the denominator of the y squared term. So c squared is going to be 49 plus 25. So it says c squared is going to be, what is that? Uh, it looks like uh, 74. And OK, you know, again, we could always try to, to uh, simplify this a little bit. So if we solve for c, I'm going to make that the square root of 74, again, just keeping the positive solution. I don't know that the square root of 74 breaks down that much. Um, it's certainly divisible by 2. But it looks like we would get 2 times 37. That would give us 74. Well, 37 is a prime number, so this really doesn't uh, factor too much more. Um, in fact, it doesn't really factor. I mean, you can always make it 37 times 1, but that's not going to help us break down the, uh, the square root anymore. So I'm just going to use the c value of uh, square root of 74. All right, so when I go to graph this, we'll come back to that in just a second. OK, it says my asymptotes occur at y equals negative b over a and y equals positive b over a. So in this case, our asymptotes are going to be at positive negative b over a, so positive and negative 5 sevenths x. Um, if it had a slope of 1, it would kind of just kind of go off at a 45 degree angle. 5 sevenths will be a little bit, um, a little bit less steep than that. So I usually graph my asymptotes first. So there's y equals positive 5 over 7x. And likewise, we would have y equals, um, so this will be y equals negative 5 over 7x. Um, it says my, asymptote, or excuse, my, uh, my vertices occur at positive a0 and at negative a0. So my vertices are going to occur at uh, 7 comma 0 and also at the point, so this will be negative 7 comma 0. And really at this point to me you've almost got everything you need to do a decent little graph. Um, when I graph this, um, Basically, my hyperbola is just going to get closer and closer to the asymptote. Um, same thing as you go down. Um, likewise, as we go to the right, it should be getting closer to that asymptote from above. And it'll get closer to that asymptote that's below it. Um, so let's see. Uh, one other thing, we could always even stick our, our, um, our foci in there. So we said uh, our c value is the square root of uh, 74. So one of the foci would be at positive square root of 74 comma 0. And then the other foci would be sitting there at the point negative square root of 74 comma 0. Again, your graph doesn't go through those foci, so I'm just sticking a little x there just to indicate where they are. Uh, your hyperbola doesn't go through those points. But again, those are kind of uh, useful um, bits of information, finding the foci. So, all right, at this point, to me, I think we've got a decent little graph, and um, I would call it a day.